So I've been working on this room renovation for my son for what feels like forever now, um, but I'm finally onto the part that I really enjoy doing, which is building the furniture. Now, if you saw the thumbnail, you'll see that I'll be building a toddler bed out of a single sheet of plywood. So I went ahead and traced the design onto the plywood, but wasn't totally sold yet on whether or not I liked it, so I cut it out of this piece of cardboard so I could get a better feel for the size um, and whether or not it really fit the space. So once I got the approval from my wife and was happy with the design, I was ready to start tracing it all out and planning it out. So there's going to be two pieces that have duplicates. Um, this side piece will get two pieces as well as the head and footboard. They'll be the same. So once I cut out the first piece, I'll then proceed to use a pattern router bit and cut out the other piece to match exactly. Um, now as far as material, I'll be using this Baltic birch. Um, all the furniture I'm building for my son's room is going to be Baltic birch. It's all going to be exposed edge. So Baltic birch is a really good choice for exposed edge plywood furniture because of the amount of layers that it has. It's got a really appealing look to it, so that's what I'll be using. So this is my idea book where I plan out um, what I'm going to be designing. And I go through a bunch of different options in my head and different things that I want to get on paper to get a better idea. Once I finalize the design, I just need to plan out the measurements. Um, I already had the side pieces planned out and drawn onto the plywood, so I just had to draw the head and footboard, which is really easy. It's just a rectangle with rounded corners and one slot running through like the upper third. Um, I ended up using this can of dry decks spackling. Um, it had a good size radius that I thought would fit well for the furniture. You want to make sure you set your blade height to half a tooth higher than your material thickness. Um, that'll get you a cleaner cut and it'll make your saw run a little more efficiently. Um, I'm cutting this sheet right now directly in half um, and then I'm going to cut everything widthwise. Now when you're cutting across the grain like this, it's good practice, especially with plywood, to tape over the line that you're going to be cutting and that will help prevent chip out and it'll make a lot cleaner cut. You also want to make sure you set the circular saw depth to half a tooth thicker than your final material thickness. Um, once everything was cut and more manageable, I went ahead and ran it through the table saw at its final height, which was going to be 23 inches. I chose 23 inches for the height because the width of the plywood is 48 inches, half of that would be 24, and I just gave myself an inch of wiggle room just in case. Now to cut the slots out, I had the brilliant idea of just plunging my circular saw through and trying to keep it straight all by hand. Um, in hindsight that was not a very good idea. If I did this again, I would definitely drill a hole somewhere in the center of the slots and then just use a jigsaw and follow as close as I could based on the tools that I have. Um, the optimal method though would be if you own a track saw to use a track saw. Um, especially the ones that have like the plunging function with the depth stop. That way you can just set the track saw where you need it, line up your saw, and then just plunge it through. Um, I know that Festool track saw has that capability. I'm not sure if the other ones do, but if you own a saw like that, that would definitely be the best method to achieve this. If you do use a jigsaw though, you could also set up a straight edge guide, uh, but I just didn't want to do that. I don't really want to set up a straight edge guide for, what, eight different cuts? Um, maybe I'm just lazy, but you could do it with a guide and it would be perfectly straight. Using the circular saw on the end portions like this was fine, because I could just come in from the end like you would normally use a circular saw, but trying to hand plunge it, keep it straight, and get it close to the line it's just not a very good idea, so definitely do something that's going to be safer and that's going to get you a nice clean line. So to cut the curves, I did use a jigsaw, um, and it worked pretty well. I had to go painfully slow to try and make sure that my finished line or cut was plumb or 90 degrees to the surface. If you ever used a jigsaw, you know that if you're cutting on a curve or turning, the cut usually ends up being slanted one way or the other and isn't perfect 90 degrees to the surface. So um, I would in the future use a hole saw to cut out the perfect circle and make sure that it's perfectly plumb. Um, but the jigsaw worked, you just have to go super, super slow to make sure that your cut comes out perfectly 90 degrees. Now to cut outside corners, you would obviously still need a jigsaw. But if you have a hole saw that fits the size that you want or the radius, then I would definitely recommend using that. 
if you can. Um, it'd be a lot easier, a lot faster, and you wouldn't have to put so much pressure on your hands to maintain the perfect jigsaw speed for so long. After everything was cut out, I made sure to sand everything nice and smooth. This is going to be the guide for the other piece, so I need to make sure that it's got a nice flat edge for the router bearing to ride along. I was using an 80 grit pad on my orbital sander, and then I just hand sanded the insides of everything else, also using 80 grit. I also made this rudimentary sanding block. It's literally just a piece of 2x4 with a screw holding the sandpaper on at either end. Once I was happy with the edges of this piece of plywood, I was good to clamp it to the other piece and begin tracing out the outline. The reason I'm tracing this is because I need to cut off the majority of the material with my circular saw or jigsaw. If you try to cut this all out with the router, it's just too much for it to handle. Um, so you really want to cut off a majority of the material. Here you can see how much I left. There's about a quarter inch, maybe an eighth inch or at any given surface. Um, any more than that and it's, it starts to really clog up the router and it can't really run as smoothly as it would like. I'm just using a pattern router bit with a bearing on top and the cutter on the bottom. You could also use a router bit with the bearing on the bottom and the cutting blade on top. You'll just have to flip the guide around so that the guide is on the bottom and the piece you're cutting is on top. It just depends on whatever router bearing you're using. So I'm going to have the headboard and footboard slot into these side pieces um, and I want the reveal to be the same on the bottom as it is on the side. So on the sides here it's going to be an inch and a half so the bottom is also going to be an inch and a half so the headboard and footboard is going to be up off the ground an inch and a half. So ignore this mark here that was just a preliminary mark I was doing but so from there to there it's 21 and a half. These are going to be half lap joints so I need to cut the exact half in order for it to line up properly. So half of 21 and a half is going to be 10 and 3 quarters. So from the side pieces, I'll be cutting from the top down to 10 and 3 quarters. And from the front and back head and footboard, I'll be cutting from the bottom up to 10 and 3 quarters. That way when they slot in together, it should line up perfectly. So I never made any slots like this before. So I decided to use my miter saw to cut them. I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but this way worked really well for me. I set up a stop block to make these cuts easily repeatable because I'm gonna be cutting eight identical cuts on the outside and then there will be eight identical cuts on the inside for all four edges of this bed. It's also a good practice to tape where you're gonna be cutting because the miter saw is gonna be cutting across the grain so there's a higher chance for tear out. So I would definitely advise taping if you're using this method. I wasn't quite sure the best way to finish removing the material, so I just used a hammer and a chisel, scored both sides, and then bent and snapped out the middle. Then I went back with the hammer and chisel and cleaned up the edges. While going back over the footage, I guess I just sort of glossed over putting the actual bed together, but at this stage in the process, I need to cut the side supports that are going to hold the bottom mattress support. It's at this point that you'll realize, though, you need more than one sheet of plywood. I had extra plywood in plan for this, um, so that's what I used for the bottom support, but you could really just use any sort of slat material like any other typical bed frame. Even though this support piece won't be visible, I decided I wanted to match the style of the bed. So I measured out and drew perfectly spaced slots to match the style of the slots that are in the bed frame. And then I proceeded to cut them the exact same way with my jigsaw um, and a circular saw. I also measured out and marked all of my side support pieces and I made sure to drill perfectly spaced holes. This isn't super necessary but I just wanted everything to be nice and uniform. So before I installed these, I went ahead and lined them up where I wanted them to go, and I drew a line as a reference line so that I could line it up, drill one side, and then line up the other side and drill that in. And using a clamp in the middle really helped out a lot. I also pre-drilled everywhere that I was adding a screw. 
Um, this is my first time using Baltic Birch, but it seems to be a lot harder than normal plywood. So I would definitely pre-drill. So this is the bed frame fully assembled. And I wanted to get inside of it just to see how strong and sturdy it was. And it ended up being pretty strong. The next step in the process is to give everything a nice round over and sand it all nice and smooth and then finish it. And for finish, I'm going to be using this Osmo Pollux oil. This is the first time I've used this product and it ended up turning out really well. And I've actually used it multiple times since this video. Um, and it's come out great every time. It's pretty much foolproof to apply and it creates a nice, really durable finish that isn't too yellow. Um, and for this light Baltic birch, I really wanted it to be nice and light. So I disassembled everything so that I could begin sanding and adding the round over. Um, and I'm using this quarter inch round over bit. You can do whatever round over you find most appealing, but this is the one that I liked. It gives everything a nice smooth edge without being too rounded. I then started sanding everything. Um, and all that I used was 150 grit sandpaper. And I just sanded the surface and the edges of everything. Um, and it ended up working out pretty good. You could sand up to 220, and I've done that for some of the other projects I've worked on. And that just makes it a little bit smoother, but the difference is hardly noticeable, and 150 should work just fine. After all that, um, I went ahead and vacuumed off the surface to get all the dust away, and then wiped it all with mineral spirits to get any residual dust. You could also use a tack cloth, um, but I don't really buy tack cloth, so mineral spirits worked fine for me. Um, and then to finish this, I wanted to assemble the entire bed. That way I could finish everything once without having to finish one side, let it dry, flip it over, finish the other. You could do it that way, but I wanted to be able to put one coat on everything, let it dry, and then apply a second coat. So when I first opened this can of Osmo Pollux oil, it was purple, and I didn't realize it was going to be purple, so I was a little surprised at first, and I had to research online to make sure that was normal, and it was perfectly normal. So. And you really want to make sure you stir this stuff good because it does settle a lot at the bottom. I researched a bunch of different ways to apply this stuff, but none of them were as easy as I wanted it to be. So the way I ended up applying it was just using a white Scotch-Brite pad, and I wiped one even coat over the entire surface of everything. And then I went back and wiped it off with disposable rags until it was pretty much dry to the touch. I let that sit overnight. Then I came back the next day, applied a second coat the exact same way, wiped it off until it was completely dry, and then let it dry overnight. The following day, if it feels rough to the touch at all, you can just take a new clean Scotch-Brite pad and just wipe any surface that isn't perfectly smooth and it smooths it out perfectly. Um, and that's what I really like about this finish is that even if it isn't perfectly smooth after the final coat, you can just buff it out and make it as smooth as you want it to be. So that's it for this project. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.